Oh, great. Uh, good morning again. I'm from the city of Krasnoyarsk. I represent uh, uh, in f uh, the immunologists. Uh, uh, I represent the community of doctors who are dealing with infections. Uh, we are very active, uh, uh, studying, uh, so to say, indirect or secondary diseases. In this category of such diseases is very impressive. Whatever cardiologists say, for example, but uh, immune system uh, diseases is leading or diseases that are connected with impairments of the immune system. I could refer to our article, article published by our community, which is dealing with the regulation of different uh, uh, sectors, if I may say so, of immune system. And uh, we devoted attention to uh, unusual infections and uh, uh, to HPV. It is associated with the pathology that uh, you are dealing today with its uh, oncology. And similar to oncological pathology, such disease or diseases, group of diseases I'm, I'm talking about, uh, development of the disease is uh, very serious, very tough, but they are connected with impairment of uh, the immune system. When we speak about HPV, we think about cancer immediately. And when we speak about particular forms of cancer, we should think about immune system. And I could say that lately uh, I read articles about HPV and the authors write that it could uh, uh, cause prostate uh, cancer, which is very spread among, uh, widely, bro broadly spread among men. Before we start speaking about HPV, we should say that vir virus infections, they are very specific. Uh, they are specific regarding impacting particular organs, epithelial cells uh, are involved at intracell pathogen or parasite. Uh, they can't live a uh, outside uh, the cell, uh, they can't be biologically active. It's necessary to say that if the virus gene uh, penetrated the cell and uh, links uh, with the DNA stay there forever, uh, our specialists in genetics uh, say that 30, 40 percent of cells have virus trash, so called, and one of the sources of such trash, trash, it's just, uh, they are just nothing but viruses. The cycle of life in cells is different. For example, uh, in children, epithelial cells, the life three, four weeks, and central uh, nervous system cells live 30, 50 years. So that's why this infection, uh, if it does not infect neighbors, neighboring cells, uh, if it does not infect uh, cells of an uh, other man or of a human being during con contact and uh, uh, will not survive this infection. Uh, the types of infections, they could be different during cell life cycle. There are situations when a cell 
uh, is damaged, is destroyed. Other situation, main task of the virus is to communicate, so to say, with the cell, with the organism, with the body, uh, in such a way that uh, body stop destroying infected cells, actually. But it is immune system that is responsible for destroying a virus, so infection. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we uh, uh, want immune system uh, not to destroy cells, to avoid distortion uh, of organs. On the other hand, if it does not destroy, as I say, then immune is the, the, then. Uh, our colleagues uh, will have a field of work, a very broad one. Another matter is uh, that we have to look into the following situation. Against the viral infections, we have these or that protective systems, starting with all the levels of protection, I mean adaptive, humoral chain, cell, and uh, innate immunity. And uh, first and foremost, I'd like to mention that for HPV, it's typical that the main role of protection from the viral um, papillary infection is the so-called causal immunity. So first of all, the virus goes into the uh, mucose epithelial cells so the mucose immunity must be responsible, and the virus has a system. It doesn't have systemic in effect. It doesn't impact the body system uh, generally, but it's a local infection rather. So this is the infection that uh, comes across a particular barrier. I mean the mucus and the skin. That's why we, ha we have to speak about the mucosal immunity first and foremost. So what is mucosal immunity? Uh, I suppose that it's uh, the main and uh, the big group of protective factors which is related to our barriers, to the main contact with the extra environment, with the outer environment and uh, with the virus, with the bacteria, with some other alien matters. And here, I suppose we can speak about multiple factors, uh, multiple protective factors. At the same time, quite natural uh, main, quite naturally, the main factor belongs to the cells of the immune system. Here, I'd like to say that from the contemporary uh, viewpoint, the cells of the mucosal immunity are very specific. First and foremost, these are very well known to us cells, which are T and B uh, lymphocytes, neutrophils, and killers. But there is also a huge category of the so-called so em uh, embryo cells. The embryo cells, which in the process of embryogenesis started living there without any particular contact with the bone marrow and without any contact with the outer and inner environment. So these are very specific, this is very specific pool of cells. And if they are depleted or if they are irregulated, then we can uh, forecast some unfavorable outcome. And as I've already mentioned at the moment, the level of barium at mucosal immunity level is quite potent. Up to 95% of all the diseases, they are, they do not penetrate this particular barrier. Systemic uh, start of the infection or systemic launch when the innate immunity starts uh, activating and the adaptive immunity joins it, this is a rare thing. So at the moment, and I'm going to come back to it uh, and to talk about it in full detail, but I suppose that 
the detection and the protection from the HIP, uh, HPV infection is first of all something that is vested in the hands of the mucosal immunity. And HPV immunity first of all dysregulates the mucosal barrier local immune response. So the importance of HPV infection, and I'm not going to talk about it because it's so prevalent and it's a really a topical issue. We infection specialists have our own opinion on that. But at the same time, there is a big population of people who support this infection. We all get HPV infection. And later on, depending on the immune system, uh, we can forecast this or that response. So pathogenesis of the HPV is something that came in full detail in the previous talk. I'm not going to talk about it, uh, but I will talk a little bit on the immune pathogenesis of the HPV infection. And first uh, of all, I'd like to draw your attention to the To the mucosal immunity. So first, uh, if there is uh, a damage of the basal cells or infection of the basal cells of epithelium, exactly the cells which are protected with multiple epithelium and uh, multiple protective barriers. So it is absolutely important to have this micro damage or micro trauma for the virus to reach to the basal layer. At the same time, I should mention as well that the uh, specific antibodies against HPV infection, in fact, actively can block this infection. And so the role of vaccination cannot be questioned in this respect. Different antimicrobic peptides, normal microbiota. This is exactly what can um, prevent the damage of normal basal epithelium cells by the virus. Further on, we need to mention that within the process of infection development in the non-productive and the productive stages, the virus uses and utilizes different mechanisms of the so-called slipping away from the immune system. And first and foremost, take into account that this is the internal uh, intercell parasite and pathogen. The peculiar feature of this virus is that the cell infected with it doesn't send about the signal molecules and the uh, thermal shock uh, proteins, which in fact are quite normal within the activated immune system. Ideally speaking, in the normal condition, this is actually how the immunity should react in order to stop and curb the HPV infection. The uh, uh, keratinocytes uh, within the virus inside can actu should actually provide the so-called heat shock proteins or the so-called signaling molecules, which would be a good signal uh, of a viral infection and a complex of different mechanisms should react to it. The utmost outcome is the recognition of a cell and its final destruction. That is why all this happens in the normal conditions, but unfortunately it doesn't happen. First and foremost, the basal layer and the uh, next uh, so-called uh, layer uh, of the uh, genocides, they are 
they are uh, within the contact of the immune system. This spinose level uh, where the immune response forms as, as such. Apart from that, the HPV virus also is associated with a number of factors which, in fact, give it an opportunity to develop slipping away from the immune response in the immune system. This is related to the uh, block of PPR uh, signals and uh, interferon 1, first type, I mean. As a matter of fact, the, there are over 300 molecules blocked in 300 different proteins which actually are stimulated by alpha interferon. Uh, so alpha interferon is the main protective, uh, protective factor from viral infections. And quite naturally, this will facilitate the development of viral infection further. Also, another basic signal is blocked. I mean, the signaling of the uh, uh, adapter molecule and KNB. And uh, generally speaking, the, its only function is to activate the system of uh, cytokine release. Uh, thanks to that, the cytokine production is uh, suppressed, and the E6, E7 oncogenic proteins, they also suppress the cytokine production. First and foremost, this is related to interleukin, interleukin 1 and chemokines. Further, the viral protein blocks directly molecules which are antigen-presenting ones. These are receptors of uh, cluster, uh, differentiation cluster, and as well as the CD1 receptor. Uh, thanks to that, uh, the NK killers do not recognize the infected cells, and the viral infection slips away from the immune system. As I've already mentioned, the uh, cytokine sentence impairment, as well as the chemokine synthesis impairment, uh, first of all, blocks the chemotaxis of the lungen uh, uh, cells or LC cells, which are in, uh, inside the epithelium of the lesion. And also, they can be blocked by the binding of LC cells to the uh, damaged cells and their phagocytosis by the dendrite cells. Further on, the e, bo both the cell and the humoral immune response is not started towards the infection. Further on, I've already told you that the suppression of interferon type 1 synthesis blocks the activity of the NK cells. Also, it blocks the so-called the activity of the interempithelial lymphoid cells. Also, it blocks the lymphocytes of the innate immunity. Thus, it also switches off one of the main uh, chains of the mucosal uh, immunity and its reaction to the viral uh, infection, for instance, HPV. You know very well the so-called um, thymus-associated macrophages and myeloid uh, suppressors. So thanks to the formation and the production of different proteins related to the HPV infection, the number of these cells is significantly increased. And actually, this is a predecessor of the oncological malignant of the just of malignancies. So uh, similar to the formation of the malignant disorders, also you can see the increase in the lesion. I mean the HPV uh, damaged or just the affected cells. We have huge amount of the uh, regular T regs or T regulatory cells, which actually block the T uh, T cytocytic. Uh, uh, lymphocytes and actually they cannot block the damaged or the infected cells. 
and a couple of words uh, about not just about the topic of the viral infection per se, but also I would like to speak from the viewpoint of immunology and prompt actually uh, an answer to the question what should be done uh, when we see such problem related to the infection. With this respect, I would like to present an immunological approach to the treatment of this infection. These immunological approaches are quite simplistic. This way or another, we need to get rid of the uh, reason, first of all, related to the um, uh, reason of the pathogenic, uh, um, of the pathogen. For example, if you see wolves and uh, candelomas, we should definitely uh, get uh, just uh, remove them. And the ancillary therapy is also needed. Sometimes we can spare the immunoactive therapy, but sometimes it is needed. So we should first of all understand the mechanism, whether it is local uh, immunity. We should say that there are many medications that could locally affect